Workforce DEI in video games is a massive problem right now, and not enough developers are speaking up about it simply because they're afraid to be blacklisted from the mainstream industry. But Thomas Mahler has been extremely vocal over the past couple of months, and of course, just a couple of days ago, he absolutely schooled Kotaku senior editor Alyssa Mercante in games development, and now he is coming out talking about Force DEI and how he is completely opposed to it. I have a few different things to show off, but before I get into the topic, if you enjoy the content I create, check out the links in the description, join the community in my live streams, and consider supporting through Patreon or YouTube memberships. Now, he is someone who is not afraid to speak his mind, and... Over the past, you know, couple months, he has made quite a few statements. I mean, I had talked about this previously. Back in May, he rebuked games journalists and defended gamers fighting back against woke ideology. Just a couple of days ago, he got into a bit of a spat with Alyssa Mercante because he simply clarified somebody online who was claiming to work on Ori didn't, and Alyssa called him a dickbag simply for, again, going against this fake news, and he absolutely schooled her on how making video games works, and now he's come out and made a very long, detailed post about DEI. He said, I'm still every now and then getting questions on whether we force DEI stuff into the games we're making, so let me make it clear once and for all, absolutely not. I find that entire approach perverted. I'm an artist. I would rather quit than have someone else tell me how we should do our art. That would make a mockery out of everything I believe, and that is why I sit on this channel so often and defend amazing artists and fight against censorship because I think that every single artist should be able to create what they want. Look at Square Enix, for example. They have an internal ethics department of people who look over the shoulders of developers while they're creating games, telling them what they can and cannot put in the title because it may, you know, offend people in certain regions like the West. It may, you know, trigger ourselves and, you know, hurt our delicate sensibilities, which is absolutely disgusting, in my opinion. It's terrible to see remakes of games and tons of the content be completely altered. Not only is it disrespectful to the fans of the original, but it's also extremely disrespectful to the original creators and their vision. If you are going to remake something, try your hardest to actually respect that original source material. And when it comes to new developers, I say this all the time, even though I don't like games like Suicide Squad, Kill the Justice League, or Flintlock, The Siege of Dawn, or Dustborn, I would never say that those games cannot exist, because even though I think they're terrible, I still support an artist's ability to be able to create what they want, and ultimately, they're just getting paid to do this job. So while I hate those games, they should be able to exist just like games such as The First Descendant or Black Desert Online or Stellar Blade have extremely sexy characters and content that I personally enjoy seeing in games, those should be able to exist as well. Unfortunately, though, there are a lot of people within this industry who would disagree, who would say content that is seen as offensive should be censored and toned down, which is a stance I personally will never agree with. He continues by saying, I've been very much outspoken on how I feel about consulting, and I still very strongly feel that if people haven't lived the process and don't have to think about the issues at hand 24-7, they will always deliver worse work than those who do. He goes on to talk about how, like, if it tickles me to have a gay character in our story and I feel that character could be fascinating, then I will push for that. But I would never make a character gay simply because some outside party told me that it's hip to do so and that we might face backlash if we don't. This is also a major problem. There are so many companies that are chasing ESG dollars who do push these, you know, DEI initiatives, whether it is behind the scenes and it's the team itself by hiring, you know, more women or people of color, or people of certain, you know, sexualities, or it's actually on the screen with characters we see depicted. It is running rampant in the industry right now. And yeah, I mean, I completely agree. If you want to put a gay character in your game and you're doing so, that's fine. But my problem 
in video games right now is not diversity or inclusion. It's forced diversity and forced inclusion. The fact that these companies and developers are only putting these characters in their game in order to, yes, follow trends and chase those ESG dollars. It's like Final Fantasy 16, for example. That was my game of the year last year. I absolutely fucking loved it. And Dion or Bahamut was gay. It wasn't thrown in your face constantly. They didn't market the game by using his sexuality. He was just there. He just existed he was well-written, and by the end, you liked him as a character. It's just as simple as that. But unfortunately, there are people within the industry right now who don't understand the art of subtlety, and they think that the modern audience is going to buy their game because they marketed a gay character, but that is very far from the truth. If you don't make a big deal out of it, people are not going to either. People are just going to say, okay, he happens to be a character within the game. And it's just as simple as that. But these activists want pats on the back. They want to be hailed as the heroes. They want to be seen as the saviors. And all they really are are pathetic fucking losers. He continues on with saying, art fundamentally doesn't work that way. Everyone has stories inside of them that are based on the experiences that they went through in their lives. And to me, what elevates art beyond just craft is when you've reflected enough to know who you are and then let those stories out because those experiences that you live through are most likely experienced experiences that other people can relate to that will speak to them in a profound manner. Yeah. This is another element of storytelling that is lost on a lot of modern creatives is I do not sit here and look at a character's physical attributes and say, oh, it's a woman. I want to play this game. Oh, she has long hair so I can relate to her. I don't relate to characters because of their physical attributes. I relate to them because they are strong. They are courageous. They are soft. They are smart. They're passionate. They're funny. I want something deeper than just their skin color or their gender. And I'm not going to sit here and say, oh, I can't play this game because there's a male character in the lead because then I'm just losing out on potentially amazing storytelling. It's such a shallow and honestly narcissistic way to view video games. You should be able to relate to characters in multiple ways. And yeah, if you see a female character and she looks beautiful and you happen to be a female, you might be impressed and you might want to play the game even more. But I don't just judge a game based on a character's gender or her sexuality or the color of her skin. And it's pretty narcissistic to do so. That's just my take. And of course, there are tons of people supporting him saying things like, thank you for sharing your words. I was talking to someone who was supposed to be a creative director who insisted he didn't think people could write authentic stories without having some lived experience. It was very strange, and I thought, my goodness, how can characters ever be created by this person then? I don't know who imposed these restrictions on people or the idea that someone can't write a type of character without some consultant. The free market determines success, but I do really believe every single person is capable of telling a story. People are saying things like, absolutely based. This makes me so happy to hear. Ori in the Blind Forest is an amazing game. Thank you. Well said. I can't imagine artists allowing others to mess up their work and include the socio-political agenda from someone else. The real diversity comes from allowing everyone to express themselves without outside influence. Uh, amazingly well said. We need more artists like you who don't bow to the mob and resist DEI. So yeah, I mean, he has been very vocal over the past couple of months, and it's always amazing to see creatives speak their minds and come out and feel like, you know what, I want to give my opinion. And I'm sure right now Ori is seeing an uptick in sales, maybe even No Rest for the Wicked is seeing an uptick in sales because he is doing so much good PR work, basically, for developers developers right now because there are so many in the industry who absolutely hates gamers guts, but he does not. And he is being very vocal right now. He's made quite a few posts over the past couple of weeks, and I will continue to keep my eye on his socials. But for now, that's all that I really had to discuss in this video. Let everyone know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this, give it a like. And if you didn't, give it a dislike. I appreciate your support either way, but I will talk to you all again in the next video really soon.